Good afternoon, panel members, teaching and learning forum members, and fellow colleagues. My name is Caroline O'Connor, and I'm joined today by Catherine Burke, Aaron O'Connell, and Professor Henry Smithson. And we are here to tell you about what we have done since last October in relation to the no cost extension for our EPREP project. So EPREP, it continues its aim to improve the educational experience of students during clinical placements. We have produced a web platform to enhance the experiential learning through common competencies that have informed both the construction of clinical placement resources and also the recording and assessment of clinical placement using e-portfolios, electronic portfolios. So we have a number of partners that have worked with us on this project. And our one I'm going to talk about them individually, just give a quick little overview of them and how they've continued to work with us since October. So in, uh, uh, the Institute of Technology in Tralee, IT Tralee, they have continued to work with us through the nursing department. And there, the first year, they have used Pebblepad, an electronic portfolio, to document and record the um, nursing um, uh, assessment of nursing clinical placement. Second year, they had the opportunity to change the e-portfolio and evaluate another portfolio called Pathbright. And currently, we are, it will be June before we will have an evaluation of that particular, um, of that particular what shall I call it, web platform. And um, they're working hard with that. Now, they have been using it, and anecdotally, and they've kind of been, we've been talking with them, and they're feeding back, and they probably are going to go back to Pebblepad for the coming year. Uh, because they're also going to have the staff, which is an opportunity there, to actually encourage the staff as well to use it for their CPD, because CPD is something that's coming down the line very much for us as nurses. Um, also, as well, we have been working closely with UL, and they are continuing to work on a social media document. And that document is going to have, help us, and to help tutors and students um, Support, give them support when they're using social media while they're on clinical placement. And I know individual, like school of med or medicine have, nursing have, other healthcare professionals have pulled together documents, individual ones, but this is looking at them overall and pulling a more solid document together for healthcare professionals overall. Also, we've been working with UCD and we have worked with TCD, and respectively, they have added to the resources that are on the website. One in relation to taking a, talking about alcohol use, and the other, a safe prescribing tool. Also, we've, uh, as a result of our, our symposium that we had in September, which we spoke about, we've had uh, students who have won prizes for the poster competition, and they've won first, prize, first prizes in the individual and group from UCD and from uh, IT Tralee. Um, and they're on the website as well, they can be seen there. Now, the objectives of the no-cost extension, that was to improve the marketing of the platform, and to record for future projects and management lessons learned along the way. These aims uh, undoubtedly feed into the key area of identifying and implementing ways in which the website can be maintained and sustained. So following on for Professor Wynne's feedback last October, uh, we have actively promoted the use of the platform. We have documented the management of a national, te national forum uh, for teaching and learning project, how that progressed for us. And we continue to maintain <coughs> and populate the website with new resources. Now, the three main parts of the marketing was the three main professions, nursing, medicine, and pharmacy, we have all shared the website with our professional bodies. And uh, I suppose speaking from my perspective as a nurse, we have been in contact, and they have been in contact with us, is the National Board for um, Nursing and Midwifery. And the Chief Education Officer there has visited with us in UCC and visited IT Tralee, and has viewed the e-portfolios and the actual layout of them and what they look like and how they present, and has, is taking that on board because currently it will influence the actual new curriculum that's coming down the line in, in 2018, and also it will influence uh, CPD recording for professional uh, re registered staff and registered nurses. We are also in, con uh, in 
line, or we're also in communication, I should say, with two universities in the UK. One of them is University of Sheffield, where Dr. Jenny Swan is a coordinator for the third year uh, medicine group, and she is currently, in the seven weeks that we're talking about now, just recently, she's encouraging and she's in introducing ePrep to her students there, those med medical students. And what we're asking them to do is evaluate the website. And that's what we are, and again, in Leeds, we are just, just got into negotiation, I got into talks with uh, Dr. Kate Nangle there, and we are waiting her to reply and see if, that is, if that's feasible as well for us to work there with it. The College of Medicine and Health within UCC have now formulated a core professional development module for undergraduate students, and this will be coming online in September 2017 where uh, these, the resources we have, the digital resources we have, the core competencies, all of that will feed in to people documenting their assessments and their whole journey through using the portfolios as well. We have also in pharmacy in UCC, the second year are continuing to use the e-portfolio, which it has laid out for, and they've also added more resources to the website as well. And uh, ePrep is working with colleagues in the College of Medicine and Health to identify contacts and establish links with more overseas and to encourage inter more international take up of this particular project and the resources we've laid out for them. Um, I've presented as well at the School of Nursing and Midwifery about a week and a half ago to colleagues the entire project. And as a result of that, I'm almost like on a roadshow, I am presenting it to many groups within the actual school from the point of view of postgraduate nurses, undergraduate nurses, and the advantages of actually using it and the opportunities they have to continually <coughs> document and record their clinical experiences using the resources. Dr. Andrew Regan and Henry Smithson, they are actually going to present the platform itself at an annual scientific conference that's, um, in Limerick in March 2017, which is coming along shortly. We are also going to run a workshop in the InMed, uh, which takes place in February 2007, 2000, February, the end of February, beginning of March, in the RCSI. And the project itself there will be involved, and also at the project itself, one of the resources on the project here is a mini kex. And that mini kex itself has been the foundation for a publication in the Education uh, for Primary Care Journal. And it's all, it talks about developing and piloting the resource and training the assessor on how to use the mini kex. So that's pretty good as well because that's taking in the tutor as well as the student. And the ePrep itself uh, has responded to a call, the project itself has responded re uh, responded to a call from the OVPTL in UCC for the next generation learning space. And the ePrep proposal here is aimed at developing a technological enhanced collaboration and active learning space, but the project has been advised to work with the students' union on this as they have the funding to create the space within the same building as where we propose the space <coughs> to be. So with that now, I'm going to hand over to Catherine Burke, who's going to talk to you about the national impact and the evaluation of our project thus far. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. So the ePrep management team, we developed a document entitled Guidelines for Managing a Project funded by the National Forum for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning in Higher Education. Now this document was born out of a brainstorming session on the train journey back to Cork following our last review in October. <laughs> so as you can see, we're quite a productive bunch um, and we do like to work on the feedback as soon as possible. And to be clear about the document, it wasn't a reflection of the project, it was a product of it. This was something that helped us to evaluate the project and its progress from start to finish. Um, our project did not run very smoothly, projects are organic, so there were pitfalls along the way. So this document was created really with the aim of trying to basically minimize the number of roadblocks that people would encounter along the way when they were managing a project funded by the NFTL or indeed any funded project. Um, we found really the best way to use the document is as a resource both before and during your management of your project and it's particularly useful for those who are about to start because they can be aware of a lot of the things before we get to it. Um, the ePrep management team then presented this document to the Office of Vice President of Teaching and Learning 
<coughs> excuse me, and uh, NFTL associated projects in UCC in December 2016. So just to give you a little snapshot really of the, the guidelines, we also have a copy if anybody wants to look at it. But we broke it down into step one, objectives, impact and sustainability. So in that section, what we really looked at was the importance of keeping the project on the straight and narrow from the outset with regards to your objectives. You need to keep these in mind the entire time. You need to, every time you think of an action, if you're going to take it, how does this relate to your objectives? Is it justifiable? If it's not, leave it behind. So impact and sustainability then, what we really looked at was the core areas of reach and dissemination, teaching and learning, and of course, dialogue and discourse, and methods in which those could be achieved. Step two was assess project requirements. So essentially, your staff, what staff do you need, what equipment do you need, what support structures to make this successful. And number three then, housekeeping. <coughs> I suppose the nitty gritty really. So basically we broke that down into several headings such as your project contract, your finances, communication, sharing information, if you have an executive group, your partner institutions, protocols in relation to conferences, publications, etc. Um, we also included um, project post-mortem. So when you get to the end, what are you going to do with all of those resources, websites, etc., who owns all of that? So basically, and marketing as well, which is a key factor which you cannot leave till the end. So keep that in mind all of the time. Um, and then talks are ongoing actually with the OVPTL and UCC regards the future of that and further dissemination of the document. So I will now hand on to Erin O'Connell, who is going to deal with sustaining ePrep into the future. Thanks, Catherine. Can I give you the, the clicker? Okay, so um, if the executive were to stop working on EPREP in the morning, which I wouldn't allow to happen, but if we did, <laughs> could we guarantee that EPREP would continue? Would it be used by institutions? And we think, uh, we had a serious discussion about this, we think yes, obviously it would be. Um, based on the pilots that we have not alone in our host inst institutions, but also the pilots in our partner institutions who are very, very strong, constantly still communicating with us. For example, what Caroline was saying about path price versus pebble pad. There's emails, phone calls going back and forth still, uh, in particular with the winners of our poster competition. That generated another flurry of conversations again about how pilots were running in each of the institutions. Obviously the development of the professionalism module in the School of Medicine, which Henry is heavily involved in for the medical students, which will again also involve ePrep resources and also ePortfolios for assessment, is going to be key to sustaining ePrep into the future. The College of Medicine and Health is also formulating the Masters, which both um, Caroline and Henry have been invited to participate in, and to do with interprofessional learning. So um, we do feel very strongly that yes, ePrep, the future is there, it will be sustained, and it will be used. So sustaining ePrep and also sustaining the website obviously goes hand in hand. In the project, we've provided a platform that allows academic staff, plat placement tutors and students from a variety of disciplines to converge and work together to develop students' progress as expert practitioners. It marries college learning, workplace learning and impromptu learning. We're supporting students to connect, contextualise and consolidate their learning be it through using the resources on the website and then demonstrating these within an e-portfolio and documenting how they've used them. One of the key outcomes is a resource website for healthcare professionals which will assist students and tutors in their journey from student to professional practitioner while also developing the teaching and learning experience for those involved. Currently, we have over 1,100 users of the website, which is pretty good. We're able to track quite closely even the pages that users are using, which are the most popular ones. And we have users across nine countries. Oh, one minute. Sorry. Okay, I'll keep going. We have a 58% return uh, to the website as well, a hit rate, which is very good. New resources that we added since we were here last as well, are the, as Caroline mentioned, the alcohol webinar, and we're working on social media guidance. We've created a pharmacy section in particular for those students because they're now starting in this new um, placement for first year and second years. And then finally, before I hand over to Henry, um, UCC IT Services has taken over payment for hosting our website because it's hosted by the HEA. It's not hosted on the UCC website. So that in itself will guarantee the website into 2018 for us. So, Professor Smithson. 
I, I get the easiest bit, I just summarize. Thank you very much for the no cost extension. It was very helpful. I hope that it's going to have some benefit. Thank you very much indeed, all of you for today, but for the, the work over the last two years. Um, could I, yes, we've got the second, right. Marketing, yes, it's actually how to use, when to use, and essentially word of mouth. It, it's the change of philosophy. We're not saying this is uh, an encyclopedic block of knowledge for a particular subject. What we're saying is it's little bits to help, help students, help tutors think about what they're doing and then develop that uh, in the one-to-one the -one, uh, tutorial um, situation within clinical placements. Um, the website has been discussed. Twitter, I have got no idea about, but it, apparently we want to use it. Um, and we, we are very pleased with the, the participation that we've, we've earned in the various conferences. Um, we are talking with more broadly with uh, in, uh, other disciplines. In fact, the School of Therapies marched to my door and said, hey, what's this about e-portfolios? I said, well, I am the international expert on <laughs> e-portfolios. Um, but there was a, a lecturer who came to UCC from Australia. Um, uh, and she had been using PebblePad for the last four or five years because of all her remote <laughs> campuses. Um, you, you can see what we've done down there. Um, and uh, I'd just like to show what, um, us, how important the students and the tutors are to, to make this thing um, work. And there's one of our students giving us a, a quote. Um, she's on the website as well, and she's, uh, we've got several tutors and students who are very engaging on the website. Thank you very much.